Hi everybody, uh, my name is Winston Chang. I'm a uh, software engineer at our studio and today I'm going to be talking about doing interactive graphics with Shiny. Um, there are, are a bunch of uh, code examples which you can see at this URL at the bottom on GitHub <clears throat> and, the, uh, and the slides are available there too. Okay, so here's an overview of what I'm going to talk about today. So uh, first I'm going to talk about different kinds of graphics and what we'd use them for. Um, so, so there are static versus interactive graphics. Static graphics are, you know, the traditional um, plots that you would see. Uh, you might print them out. Uh, you can't interact with them. And interactive ones, obviously, are things that you can interact with by, say, using your mouse. Um, there are graphics for different purposes. Um, so, for example, you might have a graphic for presentation, like if you're creating a report that you want to display to somebody or for publication. Um, and there's data graphics for uh, exploring your data. So if you're still in the uh, data analysis process or you know, in the exp you know, exploratory data analysis phase um, and you, you're trying to learn something about your data, uh, that's, that's another purpose for using a data graphic as opposed to for presentations. So after that, I'm going to talk about the nuts and bolts of actually creating intergra interactive graphics with Shiny. Um, and so we'll, we'll get into some code. And uh, after that, I'm going to talk about using uh, creating Shiny gadgets, which are uh, those are it's using Shiny for the data exploration phase. And this is a new feature that we've added in Shiny 0.13, uh, which was released a month ago. Uh, oh, and I should also mention that the the interactive graphics features were added uh, in the last year. Okay, so if, when we're thinking about data graphics, uh, one question that, uh, well, one issue that's important when thinking about them is, is a graphic static or is it interactive? So here are a bunch of static graphics. These are all generated by R. These should all, these probably all look familiar to you. Um, <clears throat> some one of the most basic things you do in R is to create, uh, to create visualizations like this. So up here we have a histogram created by the hist function. Uh, here we have a scatter plot created by the plot function with a, oh, well, this one actually also has a, a linear regression a line added as well. And then over here we have a box plot. And um, these, these graphics in R, this, these are all part of the base R package. And they're all here I mean, they're all they're all static. It's it's sort of the way that things evolved. You know, before um, before R existed, these types of graphics existed, and they were targeted towards probably mostly towards print publication uh, or printing out. You know, creating printouts for reports. And uh, you know, back a long time ago, people drew these out by hand, and then after once computers came around and were able to generate some of these, they were um, they could generate these figures, but they were still meant for printing on paper, and they tended to not have a lot of interactive features. So that's, that's sort of the, the heritage of, uh, of these types of plots. Um, <clears throat> so more recently, this is not like really recent history, but uh, more recently there are, have been interactive graphical systems like this. This is a screenshot. This is actually two screenshots of, uh, of a program called Gigobi, um, which allows one to interact with the data and explore it. So all of these, these plots are linked in this example. This is not a live example, this is a screenshot. Um, but it lets you take a look at the subset of this data. So like, like this yellow highlighted region, um, the data here corresponds to the highlighted bits here and in these scatter plots and in these bars here. And, uh, and then in the this, this second plot on the right or the second set of plots on the right, there's a, a larger region that's selected here and the other corresponding points are highlighted. So this sort of tool was used for, or is designed for uh, data exploration. I mean, you're still trying to learn something about your data, but it's not targeted toward presentation for, you know, for obviously, you know, you can't use this for print output because uh, you're not gonna be able to interact with a printed page. And, um, and, but even on, you know, even sharing this over a computer is difficult because uh, other people might not have the software, um, and the, the software to, to run the same sort of vi visualization that you've created here. Okay, so 
a second question which I've hinted at already is, what is the purpose of the graphic? So for a data graphic, um, you might use them for in the exploratory phase of your data analysis. So here's an example. I'm looking at this histogram of the uh, of this built-in data set in R. Uh, it's about uh, geyser eruptions, Old Faithful. So I, I run histogram here. Um, it looks like this. And I decide, well, what if I want to look at uh, the histogram in a little bit more detail with smaller bin size? Well, I can just tweak a parameter. And, and then it looks like this. Um, so I've run hist again. Uh, with a greater number of breaks or a greater number of bins, in other words, and um, <clears throat> and then it looked like this. And you know, by tweaking these parameters during the data exploration phase, you might be able to learn something new about the data. Um, but these, you know, it's not these are not all meant to be shared with other people. Uh, this might just this is just for me to learn something about the data. Okay, and then uh, once you're done doing your data exploration and learning uh, about your data and processing it, you might generate data graphics for a presentation. So this is just a page out of a book. It's got these line graphs. Um, and these are meant for, you know, this isn't meant for the, the data analyst or the researcher to learn about the data. This is meant to communicate some findings um, to readers, in this case, readers of a book. Oh, it could be, you know, a print, uh, a print article or just, you know, a report, printed report. Um, or something that's on a web page, dashboard perhaps. <clears throat> okay, so the state of data graphics about five years ago um, was that, uh, well, you could generate, there's tools for generating static graphics for the data exploration phase, and this is a, a screenshot of um, that we saw before, uh, but there's plenty of other tools. I mean, even, you know, Excel could generate static graphics uh, uh, that you can use for data exploration. Uh, those same graphics, once you finish your data analysis, they could be used for presentation. Maybe you tweak them to look a little bit nicer, but uh, they're essentially the same thing. Um, and for uh, for the data exploration phase, there were interactive tools like GGOBI, um, which you know are good for learning something about your data, but it's more difficult to use them to uh, for presentation to communicate those findings to other people <clears throat> for, uh, for mostly for technical reasons. Uh, but this left this, that, so there's this quadrant, other quadrant here that was sort of left unfilled. So interactive graphics for presentation. <clears throat> well, um, in, in the last few years, that's changed quite a bit. So here are some examples from uh, the New York Times. Uh, these are uh, examples of data journalism. They do a really good job with these. Um, so here's, just, these are just two screenshots. I'll show you these live. Uh, get the web browser up here. Oops. Okay, so uh, here's an interactive tax, uh, tax, well, <clears throat> explorer, like are you receiving a marriage penalty or bonus? So the idea is that, um, in the United States, if you file your taxes uh, as a married couple jointly um, versus filing separately as two um, single people, you may end up paying more in taxes uh, or less, if you're, uh, even if you have the same amount of income. So um, for example, you know, so I just picked this number up here. Um, if you're, you're part of a couple and you earn $81,000 here, um, and all of that is earned by one partner and the other partner uh, doesn't have any income, then, uh, then if you file as a married couple, then you save, you pay $5,300 less in taxes. Um, so whereas if you're up here where, you know, both partners earn about the same amount and uh, then, if, then if you file as a married couple, then you actually pay more in taxes than you would if you filed single. So, um, so this this graphic has some basic interactive features. You know, you can you can hover over it and it'll tell you some information. So if you want to find out, like, you know, I'm a we're a couple, and you know, one person makes this much money, and the other person makes this other amount of money, you can get uh, some detailed information about how much of a bonus or penalty you're paying in taxes. 
Uh, and that's something that, you know, that it adds a lot to this graphic. If you just, if you just see this graphic like this, you know, a lot of that information is there, but it's a little bit harder to interpret and it's, 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 um, it's harder to find yourself on here, like with these, these various incomes, uh, like on this, on the X axis here, it's a total income and the Y axis is the percentage split that's, um, uh, or by, earned by each partner. <clears throat> okay, so that's one.